Hello and welcome back. In the last section we created this chart that shows in a fairly straightforward way the trend in iPod sales between 2002 and 2010. Now the source information we use for these sales figures actually contains a lot more information than these straightforward yearly totals and we're going to look at how to deal with trends in data where there is more complexity in the data in this section. Now on this worksheet I have the source data covering the same years 2002 to 2010 for quarterly sales for iPods. So I'm going to select all of that data and once again I'm going to create the default chart type and once again I get column chart covering the whole period but this time of course I've got a lot more points in the chart because it takes me right up to the end of 2010 a quarter at a time. Now apart from the obvious need to um, put a chart title on and label things and so on there are two main problems now with this sort of column chart showing a trend. First of all once you get above about 10 or 12 columns the column chart itself tends to look a little bit crowded and it's worth considering whether you'd be better off using some sort of line chart and we're going to return to that point in just a moment. The other point about this one is that every year there is a peak of sales in one quarter and that peak although it doesn't completely mask the overall pattern of the sales it is often confusing having peaks and troughs and sometimes in order to see the overall trend in something and it's after all trends that we're talking about here you need to be able to see past those peaks and troughs and that's one of the things we're going to look at in this section as well. Now let's just look at a couple of ways of showing that overall trend and we're going to start by turning this column chart into a line chart so change the chart type and we'll go for a straightforward line chart here and when we've drawn the line chart you can see that it doesn't really give a very good overall impression of how things are going the sort of spiky effect apart from um, making it difficult to see an overall trend um, also implies that there is a continuous variable that we're dealing with here which there isn't we're dealing with specific sales for quarters of a sequence of years but having drawn this line chart what we can then do is add a trend line now we have a number of options with trend lines but if we right click on the series itself there is an option there on the context menu add trend line and there are a number of trend lines that we can draw let me just pull this dialog out of the way for the moment by default when you add a trend line you get a straight line which is the best fit line for the existing data and on this case it gives a straight line which seems to be continuing upwards we know by looking at the data already that the sales are not just going up in this uniform way but by default we get a straight trend line. In order to get a better picture of how the sales are actually going we can choose from one of the other available options and I'm going to start with one that's very popularly used which is the moving average option. Now you may be familiar with moving averages they're particularly used when we have a trend over time which is masked by periodicity this is a good example here where we have quarterly sales we have four figures each year one for each of the four quarters and there is one quarter each year where we tend to get a peak now by averaging the quarters we can reduce the impact of that peak and get a clearer picture of overall trends by default if we choose moving average in the format trend line dialog the period 
we're dealing with is a two period moving average and again if I move the dialogue slightly out of the way you can see that the effect of a two period moving average is that you can still see the peaks but they're reduced by being averaged over two periods if I want to reduce them further I can change that to three periods and further still four periods and the four period moving average actually gives me a very good picture of how the sales are going over time now obviously the reason the four period moving average works very well is because we have one peak per year i.e. per four periods so averaging that out over four actually gives me the smoothest overall trend if I include that to increase that to five periods I start getting peaks again because in some of the periods of five periods so some of the periods where I have four five quarters I'm getting two peak quarters so I really need to stick with four periods here and that gives me this pretty useful four period moving average trend line Now I'm going to do a little bit of work on formatting my trend line. So I take the trend line itself, select it, select format trend line, and as with many of the other formatting options, I can change the line color. So I'm going to go for a solid line. Uh, I'm going to stick with that red color. Line style, I'm going to make it a wider line. I think I'm going to make it say three points uh, no other effects for the moment so that'll do for the line itself and then for the actual quarterly sales instead of showing this jagged line I'm going to select that go into format data series and I'm going to change the marker options at the moment there are no actual markers for the marker points I'm going to use built-in markers I'm going to change the type from these little blue squares to crosses reduce the size a little bit say down to 3 and then for the line I'm going to remove that blue line altogether so let's see how that looks what I have now as you can see is the quarterly sales figures as crosses on my graph and the trend line as a thick red line I think the one other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make those crosses a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see, and then click on close. And that now shows my four quarters moving averages pretty well against the existing data. So now let's do a little bit of work on formatting this particular chart some of the things we've done before and I'll do those again offline in a moment such as using a different scale on the vertical axis but let's try one or two things that are new and one of them is that when you have a trend line like this if you go back into format trend line the trend line name is automatically assigned by Excel 2010 but you can put a custom name in as well and I'm going to just change that name to four quarter moving average click on close and there we are I've changed the name of the trend line Now I've changed the vertical axis scale and I've added a title to the vertical axis. We've done both of those before. I'm now going to look at the legend here. To change one of the terms in the legend, one easy way of doing it is to go back to the design tab, click on select data, and here where it says Q1, Q1 of course has been picked up as the header on column B on my original worksheet. I can edit that and change it to quarterly sales click on OK and now all I'm left with is I'd like to put a little bit more information in the title
Now for most purposes the title facility on graphs and charts in Excel 2010 is fine but it's actually quite restricted in some ways and if you want to put in an informative title sometimes you need to know quite a bit about the limitations of titles but also how to overcome these limitations. Now let's suppose I wanted to put a more informative title here We've already seen I can click inside there until I get the dashed line and then I can edit, um, put in my so I get a bigger longer title and more informative to explain what my chart is about but in fact if you were to stop at that point and then I'm just going to select the title again what looks like exists around here is a border with sizing handles but in fact these aren't sizing handles at all and although Excel 2010 automatically resizes this title box for you as you type into it it's actually very difficult to format the content independently yourself you can certainly when you get the crosshair cursor drag the title around but you can't actually resize it yourself and when it comes to formatting individual elements so let's suppose I want to put some more text in there and I want to actually say um, showing for quarter moving averages if I wanted to say break it before show I could put carriage return in there I could select the lower text and then on the home tab perhaps reduce the point size so I can achieve different effects but in some ways if you do want an elaborate title and particularly if you say want to put some word art some sort of graphics in the title what might be a better idea is to revert to the idea of actually removing the title altogether and instead inserting a text box or some other graphic element that you can use so here for instance having got that title which I'd actually be quite happy with to be honest with you if I go back to design and either choose a chart layout which doesn't have a title or literally while I've got the title selected just press the delete key I can then go into the insert tab and say do insert text box then I can draw a text box I can recite my, reset my plot area and so on accordingly and of course with this text box I have the full normal capability of editing formatting and I can use word art in it and so on now I'm not going to go into that in detail now you've seen the basics of what you need to do but we will be doing some more with word art later on in the course so I've gone back into the design tab and chosen a different style and I've now produced a chart that I'm quite happy with showing both the sales the quarterly sales and the four quarter moving averages and I'm quite confident that somebody looking at this chart now we'll get a pretty good impression of what's happening with iPod sales as you can see they seem to have sort of reached a peak here and are tailing off at the moment probably because of uh, competition from things like the iPhone and the iPad and so on but also you can readily see these peak sales certain quarters of the year and so on so the messages I want to get over are now pretty clear to me and I think somebody looking at my chart will get those messages as well in the last two sections we've been looking at trends and as I said right at the beginning of these two sections trends are almost invariably in relation to time and it appears here that we have a good example of a trend over time but as we'll see in fact with Excel 2010 you may think that you're working with time but sometimes you aren't and in fact in the example we've just done on the iPod sales we've not actually been working with time at all and I'm going to explain this to you in the next section so I'll see you then